Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank God um, I finally made it. I'm happy to be here. Amen. I want to say a very big thank you to Pastor Yemi Davis and his dear wife, Pastor Bimbo. Let's give them a big hand clap. And um, I so wanted to connect to the earlier sessions, but unfortunately, just the rigor of our transit. But I'm sure that it's been an awesome time so far. Let's honor Pastor Shola. God bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Motema, I honor you in the name of Jesus. And everyone, every man, woman of God here, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I know like Pastor has said, our time is fast spent, but at least let me introduce my session and then we'll find somewhere to pray. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven again and let's ask God to speak to us. It's in his light that we see light. Go ahead and bless him. Shaliga barato savranda baranto shigabasta. Every moment with the Spirit is a moment of encounter. Every moment with the Spirit is a moment of lifting. Every moment with the Spirit is a moment of transformation. Every moment with the Holy Spirit is a moment of transitioning from one level, one dimension to the other. Take a minute to pray. You're not wasting your time. This is an investment. The Bible says, He that sows to the Spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal life everlasting you are making spiritual investments blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah please be seated be seated let's look to scripture for a few minutes and as the river flows it begins to bring every dead thing to life it's a life-giving river and as the river flows it begins to bring every dead thing to life it's a life-giving river You Holy Spirit. I'm teaching tonight on the river of life. The river of life. Now, there are three gifts that God gave man at salvation. When you encounter Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, at the new birth experience, there are essentially three gifts that are given to everyone who comes to Christ. Number one, is called the gift of forgiveness of sins the forgiveness of sin Ephesians 1 7 forgiveness of sins I'm just introducing my session the Bible says in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace so everyone who comes to Jesus in order of priority this is the first thing you receive the forgiveness of sins number two is called the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 5 17 Romans 5 17 for if by one man's offense death reigned by one it says much more they which receive the abundance of grace which is the gift of righteousness he said they shall reign by one Jesus Christ. Are we learning already? That when you come to Christ, um, the first thing you receive is the forgiveness of sin. The second that you receive is an imputation of the gift of righteousness. E.W. Kenyon defines righteousness as the ability to stand before the Father without a sense of guilt a sense of inferiority or a sense of condemnation and there are two dimensions to righteousness it is first the nature of god imputed into the believer and then it is the outworking that comes from that consciousness 
are we together the third thing that we receive after we encounter Christ is called abundant life Zoe that life John chapter 10 and verse 10 I hope you know that conferences like these are moments of upgrade in the spirit everything the Holy Spirit does is always in honor of his word so all the words that you have heard from the anointed vessels they have come to build you conferences are moments of maturity you take away haziness and gaps in your spiritual understanding because your accuracy as far as life and destiny is concerned is a reflection of your accuracy of the understanding of the ways of God are we learning now so the third thing that we receive is abundant life John 10 10 Jesus said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but I am come that ye may have life say life, life. one more time shout it say life. life and that you have that life more abundantly amplified says to its fullness you take note of that now in first John chapter 5 we're reading from 11 to 13 first John 5 11 to 13 first John chapter 5 11 to 13 it says and this is the record that God hath given us eternal life say I have eternal life say it like you believe it I have eternal life it says and this life is in his son the next verse he that hath the son had life and he that had not the son had not life in fact we can stop there so let me recap very quickly introducing my session I said that when an individual comes to Jesus Christ the first thing you receive is called the forgiveness of sins do not forget this it is a solid theological understanding that you must have if this is faulty you will be building on faulty ground it's important for you to know what Jesus gave us on account of redemption he did not just give us forgiveness if you are conscious of the forgiveness of sins alone your christian experience will still not be rich in addition to forgiveness of sin are we together before he died he had forgiven men of their sins so it was not new forgiving men he but he gave us the righteousness of god in christ his very righteousness and then ultimately the highest gift he gave man was his life not his kind his very life it is not the God kind of life. It is God's very life. The Bible calls it partakers of his divine nature. According as his divine power had given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. The Bible says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers takers of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust are we learning now now this is very important because this revelation is a strong foundation to my session you have to understand this so he gave us forgiveness righteousness and life let me define for you life from the bible's perspective if i stop here we've done justice to the introduction tonight because if we are examining the river of life, it's important to know what life is. Life here, based on scripture, is beyond mere existence. This is what you need to understand. When the Bible talks about life, it is not just talking of existence. It's not talking of being alive. Like you are still breathing in and breathing out. Because according to Bible understanding, a man can be dead even though alive. So when the Bible talks about life, it is beyond just being, having the ability to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. I'll tell you what the Bible defines as life. Life here means the summation of every component that upgrades a man to the God class. This is what is called life. Every component in Christ that can upgrade an ordinary man to be and to function in the God class is what the Bible summarizes as life. Did you get that? Every component, it's a summation 
of every component in Christ that is able to upgrade ordinary men, mere men, to be and to reflect Christ. The Bible calls it life. This is very important. The components of fellowship with God, the components of wisdom and intelligence, the components of abundance, the components of power, for instance, the components of health and vitality, these are all components that add up to what we call life. So when Jesus says, I am come that ye may have life, now you understand what he's saying. He's not just meaning I came to give you uh, an ability to breathe in and breathe out. You already had that biological life, even in sin. He came to upgrade your quality of life to the God class. Access to fellowship with the Father, life access to wisdom that surpasses all human understanding life access to superior intelligence life access to abundance life access to power even the power of the holy spirit life access to health and vitality life access to joy that is only of the holy ghost life somebody say life so when the bible says i am come every time you hear life from bible english don't just think biology you will be wrong you will be limiting the potential of that life are we together now jesus would not pay the whole price and die just to give us what we already had what he came to give us was beyond breathing in and breathing out life here is not life after death it is dominion victory a life superior that can only be traced to God behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God and when Jesus claimed to be the son of God they accused him because their understanding was that if you are the son of God you have made yourself equal with God are we together now that that life does not make us equal to God but it makes us equal with God equal to God means we can replace him equal with God means we are partakers of that quality of life are we learning already we are not equal to God there are things God has that we don't have for instance God is omnipresent he did not share that quality with man God is omniscient all-knowing he did not share that quality with man God is omnipotent, all-powerful. He did not share that with man. Our union with Christ and the authority that is derived from that union, it is derived. It is not absolute. Our dominion is derived. It is not absolute. Meaning the functionality of the believer depends on his connection to God. It is not like we can function out of him. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Are we learning already? So when the Bible says life, it's important for you to know what Jesus gave you. Because if you are not aware of what he gave you, you will not be able to maximize it. I'm teaching on the river of life. So life here talks about everything that has the ability, every component that can upgrade a man, regardless your culture, regardless your background, regardless the curses, regardless the limitations, biological, sociological, it doesn't matter. Once you receive that life, the potential to be upgraded to a God class is what he gave you. Most believers only think Jesus died to forgive their sins. So they are not able, they, they walk free, but they do not walk in dominion. Freedom is different from dominion. Are we together? Freedom is the consciousness that you are guiltless. Your fault has been pardoned. But dominion is a revelation of your nature. Many believers are free, but they are not walking in victory. Because victory is beyond freedom. It's been upgraded to a God class. How many of you have seen people you used to know before they were upgraded politically? Say to a governor. And you can say, you are now the CEO. We used to be roommates. You are right. But something happened to that person. Whether election, selection, qualification, merit that upgraded that person. Are we together? So when you come into Christ, you are no longer a normal human being. And it's difficult to understand because it's a spiritual reality. 
and because we are usually natural people it will take a it's some moments of upgrade for us to accept that that reality has been planted in our spirits but he gave us forgiveness he gave us righteousness he gave us life if you know this already you will see why certain diseases should not remain it is not just because of your prayer it is not just because of your fasting your prayer and your fasting must be driven by this consciousness that you were given life someone say life shalika paragoskiata life this is what he gave life life not just forgiveness of sins life are we together now yes so when you believe that you have been given that life everything from you we're coming to that hopefully that will be my session tomorrow but if you do not know that in addition to forgiveness you were given righteousness in addition to righteousness you were given life someone prophesy life forget about what is happening in your life for life there means i've been given access to abundance life means i've been given access to dominion life means i've been given access to speed life means i've been given access to command restoration life means i can tame life this life it is a victorious life so if i come to you and I want to solve your problems the first thing I want to know is have you received that life this is supposed to be the correct theology for evangelism that I have come to present you a gift first the forgiveness of sin clears the guilt second righteousness gives you access to the father third life the access to live victoriously you cannot be a powerful man of God without a consciousness of life life is greater than anointing anointing is what gives credence to the consciousness of life are we together now yes do you know what it means to be called a life giving spirit this is a quality of life that even Adam did not have what God restored was not the same life Adam had Adam was a living soul but he could not transfer life to any other thing you see that now if there were a sick person in the garden of Eden Adam would not be able to heal him because he was not a life-given spirit he was a living soul blessed be the name of the Lord I promise to keep to time so that life here talks about the summation of every component don't forget this every component in Christ that upgrades an ordinary man look at me when the, when Nebuchadnezzar became an animal my question is what part of him was degraded what is the difference between a man and an animal huh there are animals that look like men why don't you call them men so at what point does a human being become downgraded it is a quality of life are we together now the moment you lose a certain quality of life you can no longer be called human you will be called something else fish has life animals have life the problem the reason why you cannot give them that status man is because their life is lower than the quality allotted for humans albeit they have life are we together so if i want to turn you to an animal i use situations and circumstances to stain your life such that you will be better you will not live like a human being again for instance poverty for instance pain so there are programmings that reduce men the assignment is not just to afflict your body it is an attack on your life that i will do something to this individual so when the thief comes he's not looking for your money he's looking for that quality of life 
that exalts you to the God class. He begins to rob and by robbing, he's degrading you. Any other thing aside from the person God created, he's satisfied. You need to know what Satan is looking for. If you think Satan is looking for your finances, you got it wrong. If you think Satan is looking for your child, you got it wrong. That level of passion is beyond finances. That level of passion is beyond destroying your ministry. It is an attack. The only way God can be represented in an individual is that there is a certain kind of life you must emit to the world. It is in manifesting that life that they see God. Anything lower than that life will paint another creature, not God. Are we together now? So when Satan comes to your life, he's attacking one thing, the God factor in you. Whatever has the ability to reveal the glory of the Lord in your life, if it is the anointing upon your life in ministry, he will attack that anointing. If it is your children, he will attack the children. So the weapons that he fashions is based on the degree that it can attack the life of God in you. If it is your finances, he will attack your finances because in attacking your finances, he has seen that it will affect the quality of your life. If it is your health, if being sick will discourage a thousand people, he will attack your health. Not because of you, but the effect. Satan is very visionary. He's, he's, he's threatened by the revelation of the life of God. And all his attack is to this end the problem is we're attacking the we are looking at the finances the children why am i barren why am i not getting a job no that is a very inferior way of thinking i'm giving you spiritual intelligence that when satan comes to attack a man is beyond finance he's not interested he's beyond lack of a child or having a child that's none of his business all that he's looking for is god the God factor within that individual. He wants to so damage it that your life becomes a poor representation of God. It's an assignment. That's why he's called a thief. Have you ever asked that what he steals, what he kills, what he destroys? My question is, what does he do with it? If a thief steals your money, it's because he needs money. But Satan does not need what he's stealing from you. So why does he steal it? Because it is not useful to him. why does he steal it what does he want to do with your health does it add to him what does he want to do with your finances is satan looking for your job he's not a rival in your company he's not seeking to be a, 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 a director in the company so why is he fighting the saints this is what we need to understand Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life. That life is the pathway to the revelation of his glory. If you are not a custodian of that light, it is impossible for your life to glorify God. So he upgrades men by giving them that life as a gift. Are we together now? Now let me say one more thing. I hope we are learning so far. Have you forgotten anything I said so far? The Holy Spirit will bring it in, in your remembrance because it's important. This is beyond a discussion. These are the vital keys that will help you walk in glory and dominion. That when we came to Jesus Christ, as you made that altar call, if anyone has answered the altar call tonight, this is what happened to you. Whether you felt it or not, that you were given three things. The forgiveness of sin. You were given the gift of righteousness through the abundance of his grace and mercy and that you were given life, zoe, God's kind and God's very life in fact. Now let me say this, now I introduce the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit I wrote here is both the conveyor and the administrator of the life of God in man. The Holy Spirit is the conveyor he's the one who brings that life and he's the administrator that releases the potential in that life you need to listen carefully 
as much as it is wonderful to have received the life of God, the Holy Spirit is the conveyor in giving you that life, the office responsible for conveying that life and administering the riches embedded in that life is the office of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is both the conveyor and the administrator of the life of God in man. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. I want to now introduce you to a name the Holy Spirit is called. He's called the Spirit of life. The Bible says, verse 1, when you read, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Are we still here? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Read verse 2 with me if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, go. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus uh -huh, had set me free from the law of sin and death. One more time. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had set me free from the law of sin and death. Now watch this. Paul introduces the Holy Spirit in a very spectacular way. The Spirit of life. Jesus called him several things, but did not call him the spirit of life directly. It was Paul by revelation that introduced this dimension of the Holy Spirit. That is not only the spirit of truth. He's not only the comforter. When it has to do with conveying the life that is in the Christ and manifesting the riches embedded in that life, it is not in isolation to the Holy Spirit. He is called the spirit of life. Are we learning, dear people? The spirit of life. John chapter 7, 37 to 39. Now, Jesus is making a very interesting statement. The Bible says, and in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried and said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has written, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Shout verse 39 with all your heart if you are a believer. Are you ready? One, two, go. But this he spake of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Ah, so the river that he was speaking about is not the river that you have in Lagos. He's not just talking of water. Are we together now? It was a metaphor, an introduction of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that there are different dimensions to the operation of the Spirit. But when it has to do with the ministry of life, the only character that can relate to that operation of the Spirit is called the river. Are we together now? This he spake of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a life-giving spirit. He is not just the custodian of God's life. He is not just the administrator of the life. There is no ministry of life on earth that happens outside of his participation. It is impossible to administer God's life at any level in isolation to the Holy Spirit. Whether life as healing, whether life as abundance, everything life is his business. So if you are looking for anything that has to do with life, the first person to go to is the Spirit of God. Jesus told us, listen carefully, that out of your belly shall flow. But most believers do not even understand what that statement is. I know we sing it. But if we understood the power that was embedded in that revelation, it will change our lives. The Holy Spirit is a life-giving spirit. The Holy Spirit is a life-giving spirit. Are we learning? The Holy Spirit is a life-giving spirit spirit that means every business of administering life on earth resides in his office if you are about to pray for the sick it is the holy spirit that makes that ministry 
happen possibly if you speak abundance whether prophetically or by educating the minds of the people to be productive he has to be there for it to make sense if anything that has to do with administering the life of god it is the holy spirit's office it is the holy spirit's business the spirit of life The Bible is full of his life-giving ministry. Let me state this and then we'll pray. We'll continue tomorrow. Psalm 1 verse 3. The ministry of fruitfulness is an expression of his life. The Bible says, and he shall be like a tree. We usually focus on the tree. But we forget that the only reason why the tree produces is because it is planted by the river. Any tree planted by the river will be fruitful. It doesn't matter the name of the tree. If it is in the desert alone without the river, it will die. What gives fruitfulness to the tree is not the tree, not the name, not the species. The fact that it does not have to wait for rainy season. It has found a way to be planted by the riverside. As a result, it yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. Do you know why leaves wither? They wither because... It is a way of conserving water during dry season but why will the leaves wither when it is planted by the rivers is someone learning now the ministry of fruitfulness is part of that life Jeremiah 17 verse 8 I hope we're learning Jeremiah 17 verse 8 let's read together one to read for he shall be as a tree again planted by the waters oh he's talking about joshua selman and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and it shall not see it when it comes this is a believer's reality he's selling you a template that there is such a possibility in your work with god if you have eternal life you can choose by an act of understanding and obedience to subscribe to this template of living that during heat it does not affect you and the secret is that you have life not just that you are born again you have received life if i transfer 10 million naira to your account and people start shouting and saying text message is now causing 10 naira per text in all honesty will you complain no because I've given you something that immunes you. That reality does not apply to you. If you relate with people, it's just for sympathy. But as a person, that reality no longer exists. This is what the life of God does. When it comes, certain realities, you can relate out of compassion. But in terms of personal experience, that life has immuned you from the presence of that. And it is not just spiritual alone. This is what he's saying. He shall not see when he comes. He will not even be aware. But her leaves shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. When you see a fruitful believer. When you see a fruitful ministry. When you see a fruitful business. Every time you see consistent bearing of fruit. Make no mistakes. The spirit of life is behind it powering an individual mysteriously but consistently when you see a man of god fruitful with righteousness and the dignity of kingdom integrity move beyond the sermons move beyond the looks at the back of that result is the spirit of life flowing like a river turn in every church turn in every region turn in a man's life somebody say in the name of jesus shout it come on say in the name of jesus I am fruitful by the spirit of life. I am fruitful by the spirit of life. I am fruitful by the spirit of life. Please sit down. Fruitfulness. Isaiah 32 15. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, and then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine here is another dimension and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest until the spirit 
like rain that now comes and flows be poured upon us from on high jeremiah isaiah chapter 41 i believe verse 18 give it to us restoration the ministry of the spirit restoration by the spirit it says i will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys i will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water the spirit of god you may have heard my teachings to restore does not mean to move forward restoration is different from progress restoration is to be carried by the mercy of god it's an operation of god's mercy that brings a man into a reality whatever was the impedance that stopped you lag in time it brings you to a point where based on your current result we cannot trace where the limitation happened from that is restoration are we together now yes so if for 10 years had you given birth immediately after you got married maybe you would have had a child three three years spacing now you are 10 years you've been barren if god gives you triplets that's not progress that's restoration because he took 10 years and brought it in nine months are we together now restore restore god can restore years god can restore things god can restore years god can restore things these are his time redemption strategies there are two ways that god redeems time one to bring restoration two to bring speed and it is all by the spirit and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran he overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel when the spirit of god comes upon a man let me tell you the truth don't tempt me let's not let's not go there i came late i have to pay the price for coming late are we together <laughs> ah, i believe this oh restoration who am i speaking to in the name of jesus that by this time tomorrow by the power that raised christ from the dead what has left your life relationships that have left your life i stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic i command restoration 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 by the spirit of god restoration strategic relationships restoration oh let the river flow let it bring restoration let it flow to every aspect of your life the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore please be seated isaiah 44 verse 3 the ministry of life the spirit of god can give hope to the hopeless it is part of the ministry of life read with me don't be tired you are in church it's a camp meeting one to read for i will pour water not on everyone on him that is thirsty and floods upon your dry ground in case you didn't understand what i said this is what it means i will pour out my spirit upon your seed that every time he finds a thirsty soul do you know what leads to thirst a prolonged period of lack of refreshing and he said when i find such a man weary because he's 10 years without a job weary because you've been confessing god's word and nothing is happening god's remedy for weariness is not counseling counseling is important but he introduces you to the ministry of life as the permanent cure to weariness do you believe this weary in ministry it looks like things are not working weary as a believer where your integrity does not seem to be producing results weary like job where men look at you and nod their head weary because of the vicissitudes of life 
let me tell you when God comes to a weary soul he pours water the Spirit of God he pours water he floods your ground he floods your life I thought what to give a weary soul is water to drink but this kind of weariness is not in need of a drink he needs to pour that water upon you let me tell you the truth you have endured here teaching after teaching many of you do not know that whilst you are seated here you are like a plant that is withering nobody really knows but you are noticing that you are having to cut away some of your leaves because life is telling on you as you are hearing me speak that river is pouring upon you giving you life giving you refreshing giving you life a minister of the gospel came here weary just saying after this conference i will give up i will finally pack up let me tell you when that river flows there is a refreshing you can start again there is a refreshing ah rejoice not over me my enemies in the name of jesus christ when the river flows he said there is hope for a tree even if it be cut short at the scent of water provided that river gets to you you will board again who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the king of kings we will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun till the end of every day praise Adonai. listen listen Isaiah 66 verse 12 I don't know why God is ministering to me to speak to someone this is the dimension of life you are in need of you love Jesus but your integrity has not yielded fruit yet and you are literally about to give up ah. you are taking up a lamentation you have a personal grievance with God because it looks like you're holding on to righteousness does not seem to pay off this is why he brought you to this conference. The Spirit of God is a life-giving spirit. Life. The Holy Spirit ministers life. Another dimension of his life is called peace. <laughs> yes, sir. The peace of God beyond understanding you sit in the midst of fire and it's as if you cannot see it the bible says for thus saith the lord behold i will extend peace to her like a river peace like a river that what made you cry yesterday does not make you cry again what threatened you yesterday does not threaten you though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil that ability has been lost when the Holy Spirit came like a river he brought me peace he brought me peace he brought me peace he brought me peace Amos chapter 5 and verse 24 I'm describing for you the various components and the facets of the Spirit the operations of the Holy Spirit scattered through Scripture righteousness and justice is the final one i will give you now this is still life oh, the ministry of life involves administering righteousness and justice but let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream this is the spirit god he is able to bring justice that for 10 years you have been confessing and it looks like it will not come to pass if God leaves you that way based on his integrity he can be charged for injustice so the Holy Spirit comes to your life that based on the integrity of God as revealed in scripture 
when a man believes him certain results would follow him and he comes to find out why your life in spite of believing has not answered on that wise he will met out justice if there are enemies that are stopping it he will take care of them the secret of peace is justice it's impossible to have peace indefinitely it took justice for god to find peace over man he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied when someone steals from you as they jail the person you are comforted that this guy who troubled me for 10 years now justice has been meted out so don't you think the holy spirit just comes there are dimensions of the river that you don't want to see when the holy spirit wants to met out justice he can become a river to you coming you on one side but become a vicious flood if you doubt this ask noah two things happened at the same time that the ark of noah was being elevated by that same flood but there were certain people mockers of the integrity of god while he built they mocked him and when that river came it saved one and drowned the other the bible says the heavens gave their rain and the earth released its own water whoever was in between was because of disobedience the ark was the only place of safety there are people who may seem to be stronger than you right now stronger than you politically stronger than you in terms of influence but let me tell you the truth when the spirit of god brings life within that life is a system for meting out righteousness and justice you don't need to fight certain battles no the spirit of god is the administrator of his life that's the reason why when they mocked jesus and laughed at him he kept quiet there is already a system believe me when they laughed at job and mocked at job he kept quiet it was unnecessary the bible says in job 42 verse 10 that god restored the captivity of job he restored it are we together that someone took you out of your office because of righteousness you would not be corrupt you would not compromise on your stand as a believer and now you are suffering the penalty for integrity and righteousness whoever told you that god is blind that means you do not understand the ministry of life it may not be as soon as you want but surely surely the spirit of life will come and breathe over that situation let me find out why this one was thrown from 2000 till 2024 he's not gotten a job because of that unjust thing his child could not go to a good school what kind of justice do we bring for this man god can pick that child and bring him directly and a billionaire will say i want to train this child it's not breakthrough it is justice you will have to study the story of esau and jacob i don't have time to show you how god makes out justice but this god you see is a just god do not rejoice when sinners prevail the justice of god the holy spirit himself is the compliance person as far as god's program is concerned so when people cut corners and go away with it you don't need to say god are you not seeing part of the ministry of life is to ensure the bible says that it there will be a distinguishing between those who fear god and those who do not fear him and i believe strongly that in this prophetic season god is going to be going around families ministries your secret prayers yet no financial help us your secret prayers your preaching with integrity and it looks like visibility is not coming when life is meted out as justice you will be surprised that out of nowhere supposedly god lifts you and gives you strange visibility men will say you just appeared but it is god showing that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne Please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. We have to end here for now. Tomorrow, we'll be going to the book of Revelations. Don't miss tomorrow. That there is a river that flows from the throne of God. 
and that from that river there is a mandate upon the trees that grow as a result of their encounter with that river the mandate is for the healing of the nations then you will understand what Jesus meant when he said out of your belly it is an instruction that out of your belly so the Holy Spirit comes and there is an inner work he does in you but when he's done with that inner work then he needs to flow through you even to the nations that the leaves from those trees on account of the encounter with that river the leaves become useful and they are for the healing of the nations when you have this revelation he can send you to nations you are like a bam not just in Gilead you can be a bam in Europe you can be a bam in America you can be a bam in Lagos you can be a bam in Abuja because you are moving like the leaf that has encountered that river and you bring healing to nations fulfilling the scripture Genesis 12 verse 3 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed can we pray for the remaining nine minutes I see that we have that means we're going to pray seriously and ask the Lord that by his spirit activates the ministry of life from within my spirit I'm tired of just being a bearer of the name believer if it is true that the spirit of God is called the spirit of life and he's the custodian and the administrator of that life then I engage my faith go ahead and pray life 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 translating as healing life translating as speed life come on pray translating as new levels someone pray someone pray someone pray someone pray hallelujah hallelujah Genesis 1 21 I feel tempted to introduce this. There are two dimensions of the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit that he wants his people to enjoy. This is, this is a prophetic reality that God is doing. The Holy Spirit will still carry out all his life-giving functions, but there are two that are important for this season. Number one, the ministry of abundance. Number two, the ministry of healing. I just showed you one in Revelation but let me show you one in Genesis and God created great whales and every living creature that moved help me which the water brought forth abundantly where did it come out from the water strange business ideas from the water great whales that rule the territory of the sea the water water can bring forth abundantly I'm not just talking of your sea your river that a man can engage with the spirit like an intercourse and what you come out with is a transgenerational idea a man can go to the spirit and come out with a healing anointing that will serve nations for the rest of your life without depletion and God created great whales and every living creature that moved God created it but the transportation system it came out of the water so when the water is flowing to you don't just look at a river there are things embedded you intercourse with that water and something begins to come out of your life that you did not have before as a man of god you drink from the spirit and you come up with fresh prophetic grace fresh apostolic power 
dimensions of grace. But he said abundance. Listen, you know what abundance is? Abundance is beyond money. Abundance is sufficiency. The ability to rise to the occasion never wanting. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye have the all sufficiency. Sufficiency in terms of relationships, abundance. Sufficiency in terms of access to systems and structures, abundance. Sufficiency in terms of the loyalty of men, for it is in the multitude of men that the king's honor lies. So when we talk of sufficiency, we are not just talking money. Everything that puts you in a vantage position is called abundance. Let's pray that prayer. Father, in the name that is above all names, let my interaction with the Holy Spirit as a river, let it yield forth abundance. Let it yield forth abundance. Let it yield forth abundance. Abundance to my spiritual stature. Abundance in my finances. Abundance in ministry. Someone pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray.